Okay, so now in part two, here we have our VPNs and they are up. So rather than going through the whole um, step by step and, and everything, and this is a an encryption domain and this is so on, we're going to go back over what was done. There's a couple of reasons for this. The main one is the fact that I had an absolute nightmare with the checkpoint firewall, uh, which I'm going to share with you now. So when I built my checkpoint firewall, I built it with the, when it asked for your, um, what interface are you going to uh, manage this box from, I chose my E0. Now, what I didn't realize was, and I should have done, is when one builds a gateway, there is a certain amount of configuration that is taken for um, default configuration by checkpoint. One of those is in here and is this badger right here. So there were some issues I had with getting the VPN to come up in the first place. And when I looked at the logs, and we'll go through the logs, uh, I'll show you the, the, where to look for the logs in the Palo first. I was getting end caps from the Palo Alto, but no D caps. And as far as the tunnels were concerned, the tunnels were up. Both tunnels were up, both sides. And there was decapsulations on the checkpoint side, no decapsulations and encapsulations on the checkpoint side, and then no decaps on the Paolo side. So when we look at a situation like that, you can basically turn and say, okay, well, look, the tunnels are up, so the initial communication is there. However, when I'm building my, my phase twos, as it was, there was, there was no reply. One really confusing part of this was the fact that I could ping across. So I'm not entirely sure why that was. Anyhow, I digress. So we're going to have just a little bit of a, an overview of how I then rectified the situation. So it naturally assumes that it's going to use the main IP. Now, the main IP is this IP here. So one of the first things I noticed in the Ike Manager log on the Palo Alto was that the peer ID didn't match the peer ID that I had in my VPN. Because in my VPN, I put the peer identification down as the other side of the, the VPN. So my transit connection, it was then presenting this IP and the, um, the Paolo was dropping it. So down here in link selection, and this is something that's worth thinking about for the future. So always use this IP address. So if that's main address, then that is going to use that address. It's going to use that one there, the one that you configured initially. Okay, if we go down to selected address from topology table, we then have the uh, IP addresses from the topology table, as the name would suggest. So the main IP, the IP that ultimately I need to use because that's a slash 30 transit between the checkpoint and the Palo Alto and the other IP for my LAN interface, which I'm not going to use because I don't want to um, create VPN connections from there. Statically natted IP is, I'm assuming as the name suggests, it's a statically natted IP. So if you are behind a static NAT, then that's going to go out. And then use DNS resolving and use probing link redundancy mode the problem I had here, because I could actually change that. So this, this particular problem, when I initiated traffic from the checkpoint side, that was fine because I could fix that in the Palo Alto. And I'll show you where I could fix that in the Palo Alto in a minute. The thing was, so when initiating a tunnel, use the operating system routing table. And this is the part that's well, one of the parts that stresses me about checkpoint because to be fair, I'm not really massively impressed with Checkpoint, is when you go into setup, then we get to see the link selection for responding to traffic. So what was happening was I was initiating traffic from my side, uh, for the Palo Alto side. It was hitting the, the interface correctly as it should do, and then this was responding to that from using outgoing traffic configuration. 
okay its configuration to get back out was to go out the main ip so it was going the wrong way whereas if i apply from the same interface then that's all good it goes back out the same interface and wouldn't you know it suddenly i've got decaps on the other side so if we just have a i just have a quick look at the configuration of the vpn because ultimately vpns really actually quite simple when you think about it it's you need to have your gateways in this particular instance because we're not doing meshed we're doing uh, you choose a star community because that gives you the opportunity to have uh, a single interoperable device and so on so encryption method those are fairly simple and straightforward IPv2, IPv1 for IPv4 and IPv2 for IPv6 only is the option that we go for in this particular instance because we're using IPv1. Okay, so then um, you can use the encryption suites that are with uh, checkpoints, so they're preset encryption suites and they have them as well in Palo Alto. Or you can create your own, which is what we've done here. So basically, Let's be honest, these have got to match because if they don't match on both sides, well, then how can you ever expect a VPN to come up? Yeah. Okay, so then perfect forward secrecy, Diffie Hellman group, we know about that. Use aggressive mode or not use aggressive mode. Tunnel management. Now, this is another place where we have an issue specifically between checkpoint, uh, in fact, I believe between checkpoint and everything. Okay. And on the checkpoint forums, they go, oh, no, it's, it's everybody else. So, and in the comments, if you're a checkpoint person, please let me know. So, one VPN tunnel per each pair of hosts. One VPN tunnel per subnet pair. And one VPN tunnel per gateway pair. So, I had to go for this one because this creates the SPIs per subnet. So, it uses the proxy IDs to create the tunnels per subnet pair. So if I've got say 192.168.0.0 slash 24 and 192.168.1.0 slash 24, I'll get two tunnels per subnet pair based on the interest in traffic. If I go for one VPN tunnel per gateway pair, then I have a problem because when the checkpoint tries to negotiate the encryption domains, that will take those two and it will summarize them to a slash 23, which the Paolo doesn't like. Or, for that matter, Juniper SRX, or, whilst we're speaking about it, uh, Cisco ASA. So that was something that, that caught me as well. Uh, VPN routing, this is explained in the star community, so as you can see there, nothing's matched it meshed we've got the checkpoint in the middle and then satellite gateway shared secret is shared secret let's be honest that's a, it's a shared secret and this is where you adjust your um phases and and times and so on okay then we need rules and then the rules are here so we've got from offensive hosts within this vpn community allow yeah, offensive hosts going back out i like to have two rules um going either way i didn't actually try it with putting them in the same rule i'm assuming that it would probably work um but for uh, depth of logging um i prefer to have it the other way so that you can see the, the traffic on both uh both rules okay okay and so now coming over to the palo alto side which is a side that i'm particularly interested in basically to build the tunnels you are going to need an interface. You're going to need a tunnel interface, which makes logical sense. In this particular instance, I'm using Tunnel 90. Okay. You have a zone, which is the zones that you want it to be in. Okay. So in this particular instance, I've got Lab VPN, and I have both my interfaces in the same zone. So any traffic between the tunnel zone and the external um interface that the vpn is terminated on 
is covered by the intrazone rule, so you don't need any extra rules. So the only rules you have then, I'll show you in a minute, control in the two. You need a root, and that root is going to be a static root, and it's going to, or you can do um, dynamic routing as well, which we'll go on into a, into a later video. When it's a tunnel interface, unless you, the sort of, for some use case which I haven't found yet, you have next hop none because it'll automatically stick all the traffic that's destined for that uh, range onto that tunnel. So there's no next hop. Okay, then obviously we need our tunnels and, and so on. I'll just have a, show you a quick look at the rules. And it's looking at the rule base, we have the offensive hosts going out to lab VPN. We know for a fact that both the uh, initiating interface, the, the termination point for the, the VPN or where it's going to be encapsulated from, is in the same zone as that. So there's no rules needed between there. There's a NAT rule. You can, uh, if you need to do NATs, I believe on the Palo Alto, the you have to use the pre-NAT IP because NAT is done after. So you would create the route towards the pre-NAT IP, then it would be NATed as it goes down the tunnel. I think it's the same way for checkpoint. Uh, and as you can see, we've got plenty there now, uh, plenty of hits and so on because the, the VPN is already up. And the VPN is actually being, if I use this, so, this here, if I show the IP address of this, so this is I. Okay, so our IP address on here is on 201, which is my offensive host network. And I want to ping 216.100.101, which is on the protected network behind the checkpoint. And as we can see, I can also. I can also SSH to it in its own time, and I can also SSH back so I can come back the other way. Okay, so within the tunnels themselves, we can monitor that on here, so we can look at our IP set tunnels can see the tunnel is up because it's green. We can see the routes associated with it. Well, the routes within the, the tunnel. So we know that in this particular instance, we're going from two, uh, when we go into 200 slash 24, it's going to use that tunnel interface. In the tunnel info itself, you just make that bigger. Okay, so we've got the local IP, which is our local interface IP. Local port zero means all port zero to six five five three five. The peer IP, the remote IP, so the IP on the other side. Monitor IP would be the IP of our tunnel, so we can monitor our tunnels. The remote port, again all ports, and then we've got encapsulated packets. That's traffic going to the checkpoint. Decapsulated packets coming back from the checkpoint, and then bytes and so on. And from here. If we select that tunnel, bear in mind you can have multiple tunnels to the same um, on the same IPsec tunnels page. You can have multiple tunnels on here because if we had another network, you'd have a, another tunnel. So from here, we can refresh the statistics like that, and that just literally shows us what's um, the latest snapshot of the, the statistics. And we can restart the tunnel from here as well, which restarts the tunnel, um, renegotiates the connection between the two. And again, we can do the same with Ike. So if you have a look at the Ike, we can see we've got the checkpoint gateway, um, main mode, the algorithm when it was created and so on. And again, we can do the same here. So we can actually, we can initiate a re-key of phase one and all is well. And then we'll just check and make sure that our tunnels are still up. So then constructing the 
constructing the, the the VPNs, this is where we talk about the interest in traffic. So in here we would we checkpoint it requires it. So in here we would this is where we we mention what traffic that we're going to need to so our local ID, which is here, uh, which is our local network. So that was what will be presented to the checkpoint. And the remote network, this is what we're expecting to see back from the checkpoint. And this is where things can start to fall down a little bit because if we have 200 and 201 slash 24s in there, then the checkpoint's going to propose 23 if we do um, one tunnel between gateways. And that really pretty much is it. If we go further into the configuration itself of the profiles, so with the profile there, that is where we have the matching. So if I bring this one back up and we go back into here, we can see that we have the encryption and then obviously it matches on the other side, which it has to. So on here we've got uh, group 20, SHA-256, AES-256. And then if we go back to there, we've got SHA-256, uh, sorry, AES-256, SHA-256, Group 20, and then AES-256 and SHA-256. And then using uh, PFS as well, which is, uh, hang on, yeah. So then we're using PFS as well um, for our uh, perfect forward security. So we're going to a piece of crypto pull up that VPN and then here it says that we're going to use uh, the PFS it's group 20 and then the lifetime of that hours or you can do a lifetime based on megabytes as well um, which some people do I know I have seen this quite a lot I I don't have any preference and as at the time of making the video I don't even have any real reason why you do one or the other and that really is it. Oh, I suppose I just, if we just quickly go on to um, one second, then I'll pull up the Gaia platform. Okay, so this is, this is good old Gaia platform, the, the GUI for it. And this is just where we, um, this is where I want to display that we, we configure the routes um, for the VPN. In this particular instance, we're using static routes and so on. We configure the route so the this knows to go to the 201 network it knows it's got to use that gateway because and if we don't do that then it it won't know where to go um and that's how gaia knows how to route the traffic based on the vpn from checkpoint okay so that's our that's our vpns that's up um once you've done this you can then there's millions and one things you can do from there you can do quas down the tunnel if you need to um i think probably we'll look at creating separate uh, separate zones for where the tunnel lands and then controlling the traffic across the vpn specifically before it hits our networks and then controlling that on the other side because that's i mean that is more granular and that is best practice really the idea is to to do that um but that's it for now um i hope it's been informative if you could subscribe and like that would be awesome i just recently hit 100 subscribers so i'm actually really happy about that um and again as always any questions put them underneath and i will i will get back to you as soon as i can